welcome to my youtube channel my name is kamran and in this video i wanted to tell you that how you can get a fully funded phd scholarship in canada and this video is going to be fascinating for all of you who are done with your masters or who are seeking an opportunity for phd in canada or want to come to canada for uh, studies uh, or, or for fully funded studies so without any further ado let's get started so first of all i want to tell you that it's not a set of random tasks that you will perform and you will get a fully funded phd scholarship rather it is a structured process it is a procedure that you have to uh, go through you have to perform some steps in order to get a fully funded phd scholarship in canada so i'm going to cover uh, all my experience in this video and this video is going to be detailed right so i'm going to explain all the things in step by step so let's start with the step number one and step number one is prerequisites make sure that you have completed all your prerequisites in order to get a phd scholarship the step number one is that you have a good cgpa and you have a good uh, research profile and you are done with IELTS before uh, uh, applying for the PhD scholarship, right? So now let's go into detail. How much CGP is required? What is what should be your research profile, and uh, what are the bands that are required in IELTS? So let's start with the CGPA. So if you have a CGPA 3.5 or higher, it will surely increase your chances for getting a PhD scholarship, and uh, the CGPA matters like 10 to 20 percent in getting a a scholarship for PhD. So for example, if you have low CGPA and you have a very good research profile, so it will compensate the uh, degrees in your CGPA, right? And uh, the other most important thing is your research profile. So your research profile means that how many publications you have done, how many papers you have uh, published in uh, the journal or conferences or, or in, in the book chapters, right? Or transaction. So your research publication matters like 80 to 90% and 10 to 20% is uh, your CGPA. So if you have greater number of publications, it surely increase your chances of uh, getting a fully funded PhD scholarship. And uh, for example, you have uh, a CGPA 3.5 and you have uh, published like three point, uh, like four papers or five papers as a first author. So it's a great combination for getting a PhD scholarship. And uh, for example, like if you have CGPA four out of four and uh, you don't have any research publication, so uh, it would be very, very hard to get a PhD scholarship, right? So you have to take care of this combination but the more weightage goes to the research profile. The more research profile, the more the good research profile you have will surely increase your chances of getting the PhD scholarship. And the next prerequisite is your English uh, test exam or like IELTS or TOEFL. And it is very important that you have uh, uh, IELTS exam before applying for the PhD because uh, when you approach your supervisors, they ask that, uh, how much IELTS bands you have or have you gone through your test or not. So it is uh, required in uh, all over Canada except one province that is uh, uh, Quebec because uh, in Quebec the main language of uh, communication is French. So if you don't have the IELTS then it would uh, be it would not be a big deal to that you will not get the PhD scholarship but if you have IELTS then it will surely give you an advantage on the over the other candidates so this is a step number one of ma making sure that you have completed your prerequisites right now let's move on to the step number two which is uh, making the list of the universities and uh, uh, getting the information of the supervisor so in the phd as you know that uh, you have to do your phd under the supervision of a professor right so first of all you have to find a supervisor and then you have to submit your admission application into a university so i remember when i was trying to be in a canadian universities uh, i made a list of eight universities in which two were the top tier universities four were the middle tier universities and two were the lower tier universities right so for example i have got now the list of eight universities for example university of toronto waterloo university dalhousie university and uh, 
Victoria University, Ryzen University. So you have to first of all make sure that okay these eight universities are good for me right and then if you have uh, made the list and now the next step is to find a suitable supervisor so for example let's take the example of the university of toronto so now what you will do as you have to do the phd for example in computer science you will open up the uh, computer science uh, department website of university of toronto you will look for the supervisors who have the same research interest or research area like you and then you will get their emails and write into the list in front of the uh, like uh, the name of the university so if you have found four four respective uh, teachers there get their email and write it into the list right <coughs> excuse me and uh, similarly you have to do this for eight universities so for example you have uh, now the next university is Dalhousie so you have to uh, find the prospective supervisors in that universities by going on the website of the department and you have to get their email so once you have done that the next step is to send the email to the supervisors and the email should be precise and concise right you don't have to write the stories inside the email and uh, you just have for example if i if i talk about my email so my email was very precise and concise in which i wrote that like hey my name is uh, kamran and i have done masters in software from this this university my research area is this and i have seen your profile which fascinates me because our research interest matches with each other so i am interested in uh, doing phd under your supervision in the specific university so please find the attached cv in order to know more about me right so if you write the long stories the supervisor will not be interested in reading the long stories because they have uh, many other tasks to do as well right so <laughs> make sure that your your email is uh, precise and concise and uh, you uh, make a detailed cv in which you mention all your education and uh, all your publication activities your skills everything in the cv right so then you have to send uh, this email to supervisor and uh, like if in university of toronto you have like got four uh, teachers so you don't have to send this email to four send it to one and then wait for two to three weeks if you don't get a reply then send it to the next professor otherwise if you get a reply you are lucky enough to get a reply then uh, uh, yeah if you are lucky enough to get a reply then uh, what could be the chances the supervisor will ask like do you have IELTS exam so you will if you have IELTS exam tell your supervisor that you have an IELTS exam because sometimes the supervisors don't feel comfortable in talking to those uh, students which don't have the IELTS exam because uh, you know English uh, is the important communication language be between them right so that's why i told you that you should have ielts uh, beforehand right up front right and then uh, the supervisor will ask you to schedule a meeting on team teams or zoom so in my case my supervisor asked me to schedule a meeting on uh, zoom so i took like four days i said okay so after four days i'm gonna have a meeting on uh, a zoom with you because in four days i studied the whole research profile of my supervisor I saw the research interest I prepared for it I went through all the uh, preparation that was necessary and when I had a meeting with the, my supervisor uh, he asked me for like for the half an hour we talked about the general things like the Christmas the COVID situation in my country and then excuse me and uh, then uh, he talked about my thesis he said like why you choose this domain and why this domain is very very important so what is the rationale and uh, what is uh, wh what is the research significance of your thesis right and then he talked about my um, uh, research interest and my future goals so it was uh, uh, one hour meeting and it was uh, like just a discussion right and at the end my supervisor gave me a hint like okay now you have to apply for the admission in university so when your supervisor says like that it means that he is agreed to recommend your application so let me remind you again uh, like if you want to get a phd scholarship 
it is important that you have uh, got a recommendation from a supervisor because when you apply to the university you mention that the the this this professor is going to be my supervisor and it increases the chances of your getting a phd scholarship right and now and then my professor told me like uh, uh, you have to apply for the university so um, that was a very very straightforward process and uh, i just uh, like you have to create an account then you have to fill out a couple of forms and you have to attach your cv your thesis your publication and that was the pretty straightforward process so i applied for that and then uh, uh, after three months i got an email from my supervisor that okay Cameron, congratulations uh, the review of your application is completed i have recommended your application and uh, just uh, you will receive the final verdict from the university in couple of days right so i got the admission then and uh, uh, this is the whole uh, thing that you have to take care of that and when you are applying for the university there are two to three documents that are really really important right the number one is the statement of purpose in statement of purpose you generally generally write right uh, write uh, that uh, my name is this 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 and uh, i contacted this supervisor and he is agreed to supervise me and then you tell about your background that uh, i have done bachelor's and master's in software engineering i did uh, research in folk computing and my uh, future phd uh, topic is going to be that and how the previous education prepared you to conduct this research in the future so this is the main thing that you have to uh, write in the statement of purpose and if we talk about proposal i'm i'm gonna make a separate video on how you have to write a research proposal so uh, because it's a detailed uh, you know it's a detailed and important document so i'm gonna uh, explain it into the next video so uh, that was the step number three like uh, you have to contact the supervisor and apply into the university so now uh, when I talk about fully funded PhD scholarship, it means that your whole fees is covered. It means that you get a good stipend every month. It means that uh, uh, you get uh, enough money to survive in Canada. And uh, this is the whole thing. And uh, so if you are applying into any university, but make sure that you have uh, like uh, contacted the supervisor. So what I was doing, let me just share a very interesting thing with you at the end, which is like, I, I made a target to send the email to three professors every day, right? So sometimes they don't reply you, sometimes they reply you, but if they don't reply you, it doesn't mean that you have to stop the process and don't send them emails, right? but if they like uh, don't reply you okay find another supervisor send them the email so i hope you will get the reply one day right so uh, this is how i got a phd scholarship and uh, uh, i was only interested in coming to canada so i just know the process of canada but i hope that uh, this is also applicable in uk or australia or something like wherever you want to apply but uh, this is the general procedure right uh, and uh, uh, about the IELTS exam I wanted to talk about is uh, generally in universities the IELTS uh, for example in University of Waterloo maybe you require 7.5 bands and in Dalhousie you require 7 bands and in some university you require 6.5 <coughs> excuse me uh, uh, you have to make sure that you have to make sure that uh, your IELTS is 7 to 7.5 or 8 so if you have got less bands so uh, it will not work i guess so you have to prepare for the IELTS and then it's uh, not hard to prepare for the IELTS you just have to give give one hour to that every day and i hope you will get uh, good uh, bands in IELTS as well so th that was uh, my story that how i got phd scholarship and uh, in the next video i will also tell you that let's assume you have got a phd scholarship i never went to any agent for getting the admission in universities or for visa process right so in the next video i'm going to tell you that uh, if you have got a phd scholarship then how you have to apply for the visa right because getting the visa for canada is uh, yeah it's a uh, not an easy task right 
so you have to take care of that as well so thank you so much uh, for watching this video if you have any questions then let me know in the comment section and if you want to ask anything just let me know and if you are new to my channel then don't forget to subscribe it and uh, hit the bell icon so that you can get the notifications of my upcoming videos as well i hope uh, this video is going to be beneficial for you guys who are looking for opportunities in canada and uh, so i i would be very happy to help you guys just let me know in the comment section thank you